Welcome to How to Survey Any Book of the Bible. And if you've been attending these webinars for some time, you know how in-depth we can go and, and we can sometimes go a couple hours. Tonight will be a little bit shorter uh, due to the nature of tonight's topic. And nevertheless, it'll be engaging, it'll be interesting. If you're new, uh, sit back, uh, engage in the training, feel free to participate by posing questions along the way. So before we jump into the training, just a quick reminder, uh, usually in 24 to 48 hours, I will, I'm going to be recording tonight's webinar in the studio and making that available to you for a 50% off download of $4.99. And that link will be emailed to you uh, later uh, when it's completed, and then you'll be able to get that webinar for you. Uh, over at the right, we now have the Logos 4 training as well as the Logos 5 training. And uh, it's a really a great deal. It's 50% off. The Logos 4 now comes on a single DVD for your computer, and it comprises of over 17 hours of training, and that's over 300 videos. The new Logos 5 training is now available. Those are the three large DVDs that you see there, and that is over 21 hours, and that's over 500 videos. So it's a phenomenal in-depth training. Uh, real briefly, let me just kind of jump uh, real quickly and show you the contents of this training as I just take a minute because I know many of you have had questions uh, on this and wondering, boy, what's in it? How is it different than Logos 4 training? Well, first, uh, it's been completely redone from the beginning. So every video has been redone for Logos 5. And uh, you can see here that DVD number one is going to overview every single feature of Logos 5. It's 100 videos, about nine hours of training and it comes in the interactive and non-interactive format and you can also put those videos on your iPhone or iPad. Then the second DVD, let me scroll down to that, is the Logos 5 book overview. So I need a little typo there, I'll need to fix that. And uh, this is 282 videos, 130 from the Logos 4 training is included and then 152 new ones. If you've ever wondered, you know, what are the books in your library or what books should you get? Uh, this training here is key. Average video is about 30 seconds to a minute. Instead of doing an overview of the theology and things like that, I organize the books into 14 Bible study categories, and I do a quick overview showing you the key data in the book and uh, showing you some of the useful, how to use the book and the value of the book in your Bible study process. So not only that, but I give you a link at the right back to the Logos store. So if you're looking to buy the book, you can just click on that link and you're taken directly to the Logos store. There's also a link, if you own the book, you can click on it. So as you're watching the video, you click the own it link and the video opens up or the book opens up right there as you watch the video. In addition to that, every section has the finding more books. So I created a special link for the Logos store and that link will link you back to the store and show you other books on prayer that aren't mentioned here. So that's a great tool. I think you'll really enjoy that. And again, there's every category under the sun here. There's observing, there's word studies. We've got books on cross-referencing, historical background, theological background, commentaries, cross-referencing, illustrations, uh, applications, preaching, teaching. Plus, we've got some other sections like meditation, devotion, apologetics, counseling, Bible study methods, exegesis, hermeneutics. And then the last video brings it all together. This is the best practices. It's 118 videos, about six and a half hours of training. And what I do is I walk you through a Bible study, uh, in this case, Matthew 13, 1 through 23, the parable of the sower. So what we do here is we apply what you've learned in the first two videos, and we help you learn how to study and prepare a message. Now, if you're not preparing a message, that's okay. All the principles are there. And uh, this will walk you through. You're going to create collections. You're going to create uh, layouts. We're going to walk you through the whole Bible study process. And the principles here can be used in really any Bible study that you have. And so all the steps that I mentioned before are there. Plus, there's some bonus sections at the end. I show you how to study for apologetics, uh, how to use counseling resources, how to use exegetical hermeneutical resources. So all in all, it's comprehensive, the most comprehensive training for Logos 5 and Internet and also the most affordable. And uh, so if you're even just thinking about training or you're brand new to Logos 5 or even been there for a long time, uh, been using the tool, this is uh, training is for everyone from basic to advanced. We cover everything like syntax, word studies, all that included. 
So just want to spend a few minutes on that to let you be aware of that. And there is a special running right now, $15 off in addition to the 50% off. So just visit learnlogos.com and you'll see the links right there. And uh, all right, so thanks for that little moment there to give you a commercial on what's going on. Tonight's topics, uh, we've already done the introduction opening. We're going to talk about some recommended but not required resources to help you survey any book of the Bible. We'll show you how to create collections for specific books or any book of the Bible. We'll show you the elements of a good book survey. We'll show you how to build your own timeline, build your own commentary, and build outlines with themes. This is really exciting because a survey of a book is much different than studying a book. And we're going to see that difference very soon. And in addition to the webinar, if you purchase it, you're going to get the free personal book that's included in all our webinars uh, since we started this. Now, let me walk you through and show you what these personal books look like. Now, you'll be able to download this in a Word doc, and then Logos can convert that. And as you can see, there's a very comprehensive, detailed outline at the left, as you can see there. In fact, let me just maximize this. And so this is my notes, but this is also notes you can use with the webinar. So it's a great way to study along because all the links are here. So for example, here's some of the books that we're going to talk about. There's the Buy It link back to the Logos store, and there's the Own It link if you own the book. So that makes it real easy for you to find the book, whether in the store or in your own library. Uh, we have links to uh, specialized searches. We have collections that are listed here. All that is included in the personal book with the purchase of the webinar to make the webinar that much more useful and help you get more out of your Logos resources. So very excited to bring, and bring that to you and have that available. Okay, so let me go back to the PowerPoint real quick here. And uh, great, let's uh, go ahead and get started. So I'm going to move the personal book uh, a little bit out of the way here. And uh, let's begin with a few of the resources. Now, I haven't done this for some time. The last couple of webinars, we haven't really spent much time looking at various books and resources. But there's a couple categories about that you're going to need to be aware of when you're going to survey a book. These books are the ones you want to go to. And uh, now, I just, uh, just recently, uh, Moody Publishers, which has put out some really good books of survey, uh, is no longer available in the Logos store, at least temporarily. And uh, they may bring it back at some point. So I will have a few of those. And I wanted to mention those because some of you already have purchased those resources. And I want to make sure you're aware of it. But some of these uh, Moody resources are not available anymore in the Logos bookstore. So let's begin with this first one. And uh, it's called Introducing the New Testament. Now this first category that I want to introduce to you is called the Outlines or Overviews or Maps and Charts. These types of books are going to give you a very high level overview of the book of the Bible. And let me just give you an example here. So I'm, uh, I, I'm here on chapter 13, okay, and it's uh, talking about the Apostle Paul. And as you can see, it just begins with a very straightforward background of who Paul is and uh, what do we know about him. And then we talk about his education, his influences, uh, his conversion. As you can see, very straightforward paragraphs, not complicated reading, key cross-references are included, included along the way. And then you get things like this in here, some great maps, which you can click on, and Logos will allow you to zoom in, which is really wonderful. But you also can right-click on the images, and Logos gives you the option to choose image, and then there you go. You can copy the image, you can save it, you can send a PowerPoint, you can even print it out. So it gives you a lot of flexibility. And so if you're teaching or if, if you're really studying some aspects of Paul and his missionary journeys, maps like this are going to be very, very helpful. In addition to that, one other feature that are really handy with these survey books is the way they organize the information. For example, here's a little box that says, okay, the earlier letters. I mean, when Paul wrote most of the New Testament, we sometimes get confused of which letters came first. We know the prison epistle letters came later in his life, but which was the first imprisonment, which was the second, etc. And so here you can see that like first in Thessalonians was one of the earlier letters that Paul wrote. And then you've got the church or gospel letters, there they are, and then the prisoner captivity letters. So lists like this, and there's the pastoral letters, are very helpful for you to think and see the Bible in the big picture. And that's the purpose of a Bible survey, is to get the big picture. Uh, in addition to that, those, there will always be special features. For example, there's so much written about Paul in the Bible that 
people have been able to develop a chronology of Paul's life. And so here we have that he was born somewhere in 1015 AD. And again, these are estimates. He was converted shortly after uh, Jesus' uh, crucifixion and resurrection. We see the years of his first missionary journey. We see the council, uh, the Jerusalem conference, his second missionary journey. Look at this. This is, this is something that's kind of neat when you see dates like this. Look at this. Paul did not write. All right, here it is, Romans. So you want to name the book Romans as I have it here. And then here's the rule. Subject, colon, Romans, space, type, colon, commentary. Now notice there's no space between subject, colon, Romans. It's all together. But there is a space between Romans and the word type. And then type, colon, commentary. Now for some of you who are new, you're probably wondering, why did I use subject, colon, and type, colon? Well, look down below. You will see that I have columns of information. And each column is identified with a label. In this case, the first column is type. And then over to the right, if I scroll, you'll see another column labeled subjects. Now, by using these uh, fields, so to speak, and putting in a colon with some key word, what Logos does is it searches that column and will find any book and include that book in our list. So I have 107 resources in my collection. You may have more, you may have less. It'll differ with each library. So what I'm going to look for is I'm going to find every book where in the subject column Romans is mentioned. And so we can see some of those right here, some commentaries, some Bible studies. If we scroll down, we can see, uh, let's see what else we got. Yeah, mostly commentaries and so forth. And then I did a space type colon commentary. So what this is doing is it's finding, and again, this is with types. So let me go over to the left. And so what I've done in this particular resource is I'm trying to find any resource that's a commentary. Because believe it or not, some of your Roman commentaries don't even use the word Romans in the title. So we couldn't necessarily just say, hey, find me all the titles with Romans in it. Plus, there's some books that have the title Romans in it that may not be what we want to include in here. So by using this specific search, we're really going after any book that's a commentary. So this is the first collection you want to create. And this will be very helpful when we're looking to search just these resources. And this will come in handy later. Okay, now the next uh, uh, collection. So we're going to go ahead and create a new one. So go ahead and click new. And that will put in a, an unnamed collection. And I'm going to go ahead and open up mine and show you this next collection that's going to be extremely valuable. Now you can see the rule is much more complicated. And this rule is included in the personal book that you'll get with the purchase of the webinar. Now I've called this Romans Plus. Notice that the naming scheme is after the name of the book. And then I added the plus because we're going to do other things. Now this collection um, may will, will include some of the commentaries, okay? But it's going to go beyond that. It's going to get handbooks. It's going to get books with introductions. It's going to get Bible dictionaries but it's not going to use theology books. And so that's why this is all in this rule. And as you can see, I went from 100 and some odd resources to now 200 plus resources. And I'm getting things back that are different. Uh, like I said, handbooks, uh, imagery, themes, other books that's going to have information on Romans within it, even though the book is covering the whole Bible. But again, it's relevant information that we're going to use to search on. Okay, so those are the two what I call commentary collections that you want to create. And, uh, and we, we, we're going to search those uh, and, and show you how to leverage those for the purpose of surveying a book of the Bible. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and close this collection down. And let's move to the next, all this information about Paul and anyone else named Paul, for that matter, in history. So very, very helpful. Um, notice that in the graph, you can float your mouse and see additional information. Some of these, however, will take you to additional resources. Um, for example, I clicked here, Paul's in prison in Rome. And you'll see a link to various dictionaries, a more button, uh, and so forth. And you can see that there's quite a bit of links back to these dictionaries that tell us more about Paul. And if we click on one of these, the book and resource will open up. There is a little flag, which is why it appeared in the timeline in the first place. So the timeline is a great way to find information and time about Paul or any individual and in the events, okay? So very, very helpful. 
Now that's the timeline, but let's take this searching a little bit further. All right, so I'm going to show you a specialized search uh, to where you can search for dates in the Bible. This is really cool. So I'm going to go to search and I'm going to go to basic search and I'm going to just use my Romans plus collection again. Now notice my search criteria, very specific here. I've got less than sign, the word date, space squiggly line, 33 AD, greater than near Paul. So what I'm looking for in my specialized collection is the date, 33 AD and Paul. Uh, so Monday, May 20th, that's uh, less than a week from today, uh, we're going to talk, we're going to take part two in the ordinances. We've already done the Lord's Supper, but we haven't done baptism yet. And I'm thrilled to bring you this because we're going to talk about infant baptism. We're talk about um, does baptism save? Does it forgive sins? What is baptism? Is it immersion? All those topics. We're going to teach you how to study this topic in depth. Very exciting and uh, very, very important for you uh, as a Christian. Have you been baptized? Uh, because it is a command for all those who believe they are to be baptized. And so we'll talk about that. And does your, does your baptism as a baby count as your belief, as a baptism as a believer and so forth? So very exciting. Coming uh, Monday, May 20th. Very excited. Well, let me go ahead and close in prayer and we'll let you guys go and have a blessed night. Mm -hmm.